This is the true story. This is the true story of guitar YouTubers. This is the true story of guitar YouTubers! Pick to live in a guitar house. Unbox together. Demo together. Play together. To find out what happens when... People stop being guitar! And start being house. And start being house. Guitar house. Guitar house! Guitar house! Guitar house! Guitar house! Guitar House is brought to you with support from Sweetwater, Diadario, Chase Bliss, and Big Ear Pedals. Hey, Perfecto, it's good, it's good to meet you. It's good to work with you. Good to meet you, let's, let's, let's make some music. Yeah. <laughs> And if anybody's wondering how to uh, pronounce Mike's channel name, it's Pushing! It's the sound of a cartoon sword being unsheathed. Uh, go ahead, do it with us. <laughs> Pushing! That's there you it. go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's see. We'll, we'll play. No tones. Come on in. You want it? Come on in. Let me find it. But now Mike and I are going to jam. Oh, you're we're, we're gonna jam! Oh man. Stay. Okay, I'm gonna do a little dance. Conversation. Go for it.
us. So much fun. Buddy, you are fantastic. Oh, Holy you're fantastic. Shit. <laughs> that was incredible. Man, the, the amount of speed that you have on tap is so impressive, and I uh, makes me wish that I could go back and do the heavy metal exercises that my teacher tried to make me do when I was a kid. <laughs> Oh, dude, that's so much fun. I really dig how you how you're using this. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I mean, how, how how do you get it to in tune? How how do you how do you set it up so it's in tune with the so credit it's, notes? It's well, oh, I'm gonna fall over. So it's kind of it's kind of a matter of ratios, and it's an imperfect science. Okay. What I do well, is I start I start with the offset setup, which is pitch back neck, uh, bridge raised off the body. These were essentially uh, designed as jazz guitars at okay. first. So when you think of a jazz guitar, you've got the strings anchored to a tailpiece, floating bridge, mm -hmm. and they go down at an angle with the neck. So you start there, mm -hmm. and then from there you've got these you've got these plinky, yeah, these notes. And via a combination of messing with intonation and saddle height, you can you can force it. <laughs> up to the note that you want to get. Okay. There's there's because because intonation is kind of a function of height as well as saddle right. position. Right. So you can you can encourage it just by moving the saddle. You can encourage it to uh, what was it? A. You can figure out what strings, what notes are going to resonate okay. the most. Uh, F doesn't really Yeah. Where are you? There. So there we got a B on the D string that resonates really well. We've got a F sharp, sharp. yeah. Sharp, yeah. Um, the G, yeah. You can you can kind of figure out what's gonna pop out the most. Uh, I will say every guitar is different. Okay. Uh, my '61 Jazzmaster at home resonates most easily in the key of E. Okay. So like E G sharp is really big on that one. Right. Um, I've got another guitar that does F sharp like nobody's business, and then nothing else. <laughs> so you your own individual guitar, uh, depending on manufacturing tolerances, right. like the exact position of the bridge, the exact position of the neck, everything will be a little bit different. But I find in my experience, every offset can do those things. Okay. And I mean, hell, like other guitars with a trapeze tailpiece, like an ES-345 will also do that. Yeah. You just need to mess with the setup, the string gauge a little bit. Okay. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a fun trick that I learned and I've, I've figured out how to employ uh, that has saved me many of times, because if I don't know what else to do, like during our jam, I'm like, all right, <laughs> it's time to do something that sounds impressive, yeah. because I'm lost. <laughs> no, it's, it's great, and, and, and um, before filming, you were doing some textural things oh, with yeah. it, too. It's very cool. Something, was it like this? Was it... Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we know that B, those two really, really seem to jump out. A, I also find that if you hit the thing hard enough, it'll work anywhere. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, that's that stuff that I just really. Yeah. Uh, on my Jazz Master, this yeah, this chord sings, not so much on the Jag. Nice. Oh, that one. C. <laughs> it's sad that you can't really. I don't know. Can you do that on a silver sky? Yeah, it, it's a little more. Like, since this is so short, the the pitch is like really, really, really high. Really high. And whereas the, here you have you have all this length mm -hmm. that you can you, you have more room to like tune it up. You this know? this is why I I have struggle when I use more of the modern Jazzmaster models because okay. they've moved the vibrato closer. Okay. And it messes okay. things up for me. Uh, yeah. So like, when I was having Creston build my baritone, Creston Lee made me a, an all black Vader baritone, and he usually has the vibrato moved closer. But I was like, it needs to be five inches. I can't. I'm not going to be happy unless I've got the vintage position with the extra length. Right. Right. So. Yeah, it's just it's just a weird, quirky thing, you know. Sonic Youth, Wilco. Um, I'm struggling to think of other good examples that use this, but it's it's such a cool textural sound. I'm always trying to find ways to work it in. Right. Uh, probably, you know, probably a little too much. <laughs> probably to the detriment of the music at some point. But hey. Okay, so this actually made because I've 
I've never had an offset guitar. The my first offset guitar arrived a, a couple of months ago from PJB Guitars. Oh, which one did you get? Uh, the Saint John, their 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 offset looking one. I don't know that one. Uh, they're they're a company based out in the UK, and uh, they're 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 getting really big. They're st they're oh, good. St they've started building uh, guitars for other other brands too. Mm -hmm. So I got I got their offset style, which is the Saint John. But it's a it's a it's a hard tail and with with mm. humbuckers. Oh uh, no, humbucker bridge P ninety neck. So it's that's a cool combo. It's it's a fun yeah. it's a fun combo. But it's it's not. It's not this. You know, does it have like a strat hardtail? Yeah, it's, or, a, it's, a, okay. it's like a hip shot. Well, why don't, you, why don't you, why don't you do this? Why don't you use this? I've I've never messed with the silver sky. Let's try. It. <laughs> That's true. Also, can I say the colors really go well together? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> More so this one, like you. Oh, it's the sparkle. It's a sparkle. I, I, oh, oh my god! Oh my god! John Mayer, what gives? Let me ask you a question. What okay. gauge of string do you usually use? <laughs> I use a uh, 10 to 50. Oh. Yeah. 50 on a on a full scale guitar, a 50 is like that's my favorite E string. Oh I yeah. I love it so much. Yeah, you can you can you can wail on it and it'll hold tune. Mm -hmm. you know? It's big. That's eleven to fifty-four. Okay. It plays really well. It doesn't feel like heavy gauge. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is 63 neck. Uh, I completely refretted it because um, it was it was in a bad way. Mm -hmm. um, and then this is a guitar mill body. Uh, Mastery Hardware, EP pickups, um, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, yeah. I never got these switches. <laughs> oh, let's talk about the switches, because they, yeah. they're confusing at first. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what you need to know, this is called the lead circuit, and this is the rhythm circuit. Okay. When you flick this switch, it activates the neck pickup only mm -hmm. through these controls, and none of this works. So... This volume is down, but it's yeah. still working. Yeah, yeah. So that's this in down is the lead circuit. The lead circuit, you've got your bridge pickup, okay. your neck pickup, okay. and then this is called the strangle switch. This activates a cap and a resistor, and it thins out the tone. Oh, okay. So when you're listening to like old spaghetti western soundtracks, right. and you hear that high, thin guitar, yeah, that's that. Yeah. That that real the, the real twangy thing in the background. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Ah. Yeah. So and then volume tone. And then this is volume tone too. This is volume for the and tone for rhythm. the neck pickup only through a darker uh, set of controls. So you've okay. got like you've got your neck pickup here versus. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. A little more sub. Well, rhythm. It's rhythmy. <laughs> And this, this is straightforward, but we got volume, tone, tone on this guy. Volume, tone, tone, five-way switch. And yeah, that's pretty much it. These pickups are very scooped. Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah. Which, which makes it, which makes it pleasing, like, if you're playing by yourself, but might not necessarily cut through in a... In a I, live situation, I have I have grown to realize that I need I need a lot of mids in a pickup, yeah. or else I feel completely absent in a live context. So, I mean, you're right though. Like on its own, yeah. are these pickups different from the USA? Uh, I think so. Yeah, they're probably it. But sit. Same same voicing, I think. Okay. So or they were, they were going for the same voicing, but somebody else made it. Somebody else made it. Oh. <laughs> Something like that. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. This feels so good. I love it when other people play my guitars. <laughs> I love hearing them. So you're playing B minor earlier, right? 
Yep. It might it might not be sticking out as much with the rhythm circuit. Ah, uh, okay. There you go. And this is so cool. It's so weird, right? Yeah. It's it's almost like a like an ambient filter type thing. Yeah, so yeah. Then you go into that part. It's like it's good for intros. Yeah. It's real good for intros. Uh, something else I love is uh, I've got a guitar with a pickup back there so that I can really run those through an oh, amp and other effects. Oh. Yeah. Having a separate output? Uh, not right now. I've rewired that thing I think eleven times trying to get the right combo. So I, I may go for stereo at this point. But okay. yeah, yeah, uh, it's really fun having them singled out like that. Yeah. Wow, you got all the chords. I, I just, I just go for a weird shape and hope for the best. <laughs> so let me ask you this. So okay. I, I have, uh, I, I'm always interested to hear. Uh, about other people's relationship to music because mm -hmm. I, I have some learning disabilities that make it really difficult for me to okay. like grasp theory. How when you when you start to approach a guitar, how do you how do you get there? Like do you have the theory that you're you're going in with or do you like you said you have a shape and you're just seeing what happens? Like, okay. What's your... Um I wasn't a natural for guitar. Oh, uh, really? I wasn't. I was never was. It took me four lessons to learn to tune the guitar. <laughs> It took me longer than that. You're fine. <laughs> no, like, it is the funniest thing because I was I was uh, taking lessons class with a classical guitar teacher, and what I would do is I I do my best not to touch the tuners, to, so he would keep tuning, mm -hmm. and then my teacher would tune it for me every lesson, and then uh, by the, before the fourth lesson, my my kid brother messed around with it. Oh no! And I was I was oh, no. uh, uh, and it was like thirty minutes before my lesson, so. Uh, I was asking around who could tune it for me, you know. And then uh, we had a we had a guy helping us with carpentry work, and he's he's kind of a, like a he uh, he he's he's kind of a joker. So he goes, "I can do that. Give it to me here. Oh, wow. here. This sounds good, right? Oh no, it sounds good, oh, right?" No. So oh, I go no. I go to <laughs> I go to my lesson and and I play, and my teacher goes, "Wait, let me see that." What is this? <laughs> oh my god! Don't you know how to tune? Mm, okay, but so anyway, that was the lesson that day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was the lesson that day. But uh, to, so I did a lot of um, uh, research, like mm -hmm. go into the theory of, of if mm -hmm. at all, and it was it was hard for me to grasp at first, and then and then for some reason I would be watching something else and so, suddenly it would click. Oh, interesting. You know, okay. like I was watching a, I was watching a Frank Gambale, uh technique video DVD thing, right? And and I was I was trying to grasp modes, mm -hmm. and I couldn't like, I, I I can't wrap my head around it. And then, uh, at one point, Frank Gambale was going, yeah, this this lick is in uh, D Dorian, and it would fit over D minor seven, and just that one statement. Oh, it's the chords. <laughs> you, you you play specific stuff over the chords, and that's mm. then that's where I saw it. Like when you think of modes, you have three major modes and three minor mm -hmm. modes, so you can play pretty much any of those modes over whatever minor or major chord and, and all that. So, so it's it, there's a lot of there's a lot of that. A lot of that. There's a lot of that. So, um, and then yeah, it's it's just like these little epiphanies that that happen i love that i love that so much <laughs> you know the when when you're thinking about something else and then suddenly it just hits you it's like, oh okay that that's works. that echoes my experience with the first time i was able to like call out the key of a song okay. that i was hearing in the radio okay. um i forget what song it was but i was listening in the car i was yeah. like holy shit that's c i know that oh i know that sound and yeah um it's a, a little epiphany. That's that was like, oh, I connect with that. I can understand. Yeah. So when like. you when you heard that and you were able to recognize it, how did you recognize it? Was it just the particular timbre, or did you see it as color, or? I, I do. I, I'm not synesthetic, synesthetic, but I I do kind of think of colors and shapes okay. a lot when I'm 
when I'm writing something. Okay. Um, or I'm attempting to find a mood. Yeah. Um, which is where the behind the bridge thing goes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it's a lot of that. It's it's a lot more of a visual thing for uh-huh. me, and not, you know, mode scales all that. Okay, hold on. Let me just. I, I... I think it's yeah. still going. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah right in the corner. 29, 29 minutes. I'm used to like the 30 minute tap. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> so, so. Earlier this morning, I was like, oh, we're, we're getting there. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, so, and then uh, um, you, you mentioned earlier that you have you have a hard time learning this stuff. Yeah, like, how- yeah, stuff like this. Uh, it happens. It comes out when I um, when I try to read music. It becomes uh-huh. a, a wash on the page. Okay, I, that's always been a struggle for me. Every year, I will pull out my sheet book music and I will try to follow along with it. And I'll right. get like, I'll get a couple good days in, and I'll feel good, and then I'll hit a wall where everything starts running together. Um, which which kind of also happens when I try to read a foreign language that I don't speak, okay, um, or that I'm learning. Uh, okay. It takes a long time for me to like get past that. Right. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's been a roadblock for me <laughs> for sure. Um, I'm I'm still not a very good reader. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm a lot better than when I started out. What helped me was when I was playing in an ensemble, like a quartet. Okay, being yeah. being. Oh, immersion, kind yeah. of like a language. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and also, um, uh, with what kind of sheet music are you, are you trying to read? Uh, this is this is five line type stuff. Okay, uh, tab is a little better for me, but I also I lose my place frequently. <laughs> it's yeah. Right. So, oh no, oh, no I mean, uh, like how many voices? So oh, just this is just one. This is just solo voice. guitar. I just, ah, I just okay. get lost. Yeah. 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 Have you tried looking at the shape? Like, because... Cause, I've never thought of it that way. That's good the thing, the, the thing that makes sheet music better for some people mm-hmm. is that you see the shape of the music with sheet music as opposed to tab. Tab is one plane. That's... Yeah. Right? Okay. Well, sheet music, if you see, if, if you see it rising, then it tells you that it's going up in pitch. And if it if it goes down, then it goes down in pitch. That's amazing. You know, no one has ever said it to me like that. Before. Oh really? <laughs> I've never heard it put that way. Yeah. So so you see you see the shape of the music, and even if you can't grab everything, if you know your key and you know the starting note and the end note, you can you can pretty much surmise that oh it's a C major scale, you know, mm. or it's a C major scale up and down, and then if there and, and if there's a skip. Then, then that means you're gonna you, you jump up a third, you know. See, this this is the stuff that like I, I was never able to get from my teachers. It was, uh, it was yeah, follow this routine, do this pattern. Uh, but explaining it in the, like you're explaining it in sort of like a three dimensional way that I don't know makes sense to me. Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah, and and it's doubly hard on the guitar because the guitar is X Y. Yes. So yes, I mean you have this note, you have this note. This note, this note, this note, you know, and this note, and somewhere else. Thanks, Pythagoras. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, which is which makes the guitar really great, but at the same time, bad for sight reading, because mm-hmm. you can't, because you know, you, you know, for one thing, you're 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 only limited in in a position. Yeah. So when you when you have to when you have a, a wider range, then then. Uh, there's an extra challenge added in, mm. you know. Um, Interesting. Yeah, so that's why the like, uh, have you have you looked into the like the Berkeley books, the method? They Berkeley they are books? so intimidating. They're so intimidating. Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's intimidating, but the the reading exercises are are grouped in positions. Oh. So you you you, you read a, a line here, and then and then. Uh, Work it out so that you can read the same notes in this position and in this position and all that. And Maybe that, that, that kind of helps. Maybe that would help. That helps. And once you get used to it, when you see a range of notes, then automatically you're like, oh, I need a, I need a low D and a high D. That automatically you're here. And you know, oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that could help. I'll look into that. 
Yeah, so that's mm-hmm. that's for that's what sheet music is for me. And when I was playing in an ensemble, it 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 eased the pressure mm-hmm. because I have other people playing with me mm. that I don't have to. Oh, I have to carry everything, you know. <sighs> Whereas when you're when I have a team, there's the, if I even if I miss something, the whole thing doesn't turn into a train wreck because there's other people playing mm-hmm. with me. Mm-hmm. You know? And and and, and, mm. and interestingly, when that pressure is lifted, you actually play better. <laughs> I will agree with that. You know, I I always play better when I'm in a band. I, yeah. I always feel more yeah. at home in that context. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So I mean, it's 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 that stuff. Um, and then I I I I dove into a lot of like theory stuff, and it's just a matter of figuring out a way. For of figuring out figuring out your own understanding of it, mm. not not trying to follow like this book and that book. Like our our, our teachers are were taught a certain way. That's why they teach the, the way they that's did. That's why they're yeah passing yeah. it on. Yeah, but mm. since since I teach as well, I try to make it more accessible to people. That's amazing. Yeah, that way it's not it's not uh, intimidating. It's not it's not rocket science. <laughs> it's that's the way it was always presented to me. All of my teachers did the the method the yeah. formula yeah um I, if i'd had somebody like you who was like trying to make it work for me maybe maybe i would have been a lot better about the study part yeah but then but, you wouldn't have gone the path you've taken and i wouldn't have found my own unique voice <laughs> yeah there you go, <laughs> there you go. Let's, let's be generous <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm so happy to be able to learn from you. That's incredible. Oh, thank no. you for the advice. No, well, the Berkeley th- stuff. Thank, thank for this. Uh, you <laughs> it's, you it's, take it's that home. Cool. That's the, <laughs> no, I am just kidding. I am going to need that back. <laughs> <laughs> Got a show on Sunday. Yeah. Maybe. That'd be cool. Uh, so, uh, what are you doing musically these days? Are you? Are you I doing... have a well. The the YouTube thing is is mo- is the the one pretty much uh, taking up most of my time. Mm-hmm. Then I have I have a rock band we play uh, every weekend. No, oh, where? You know? Oh, around around L. A. Oh. We've been we've been, um, and it's it's all the music that I grew up with, that I never could play back when I was younger. Oh right, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So it's all the all the hard rock, uh, classic rock stuff. And mainly because I when I was younger, there, the, in the Philippines there wasn't a singer that had hit the. The, those high notes, mm-hmm. you know, the, the ACDCs and the Guns N' Roses and all that. Mm-hmm. But now I found a singer who can do it. <laughs> oh, so you set up then. So all we're right. set up and, and it's it's all the tunes that I, I wish I could play back then. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's a it's from ACDC to Journey to Def Leppard to Led Zeppelin mm-hmm. and, and all, all the all the fun tunes. ACDC was an enormous part of my formative guitar playing. Like yeah. The rhythm, the, the chord shapes, like... All yeah, of I have. Sound. I, I've I've only gotten into them recently, like ever, really? ever si- w- since I joined this band. Interesting. Yeah. So so as someone who has played way more complicated stuff, uh, what are you finding? What what's the nugget for ACDC? What's the thing that you're finding that you're like taking away from it that you're enjoying the most? Oh, it's this. <laughs> just beating on the guitar like that and I've actually I've actually uh, changed the way I play a lot you know really yeah just to get like um, how have how have you changed I want to hear about that uh, I, I I used to like be Mr. Shreddy with the legato and all that mm. you know but I found that if you do that in a rock band like ACDC stuff 
It doesn't cut. It doesn't, work. It doesn't cut, you know? <laughs> you know? So all this, all this, uh, all this, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it just goes off, off the, uh, over people's heads, as opposed to when you do the... Yeah, you know. I'm gonna need you to show me that later. Oh, okay. <laughs> if I remember it. Oh, here it is. Here you go. Pentatonic. I always had trouble with the... Okay. I don't remember. I don't remember what I had trouble with. Um, Show me a lick. Let's yeah, th 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 think of it as this way. When you play him fast, I, that's when I get lost. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, wait a second. Slow down. Yeah, so that's see, um, that's what makes it uh, tricky because you're used to yeah the pentatonic thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's the same move. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Do a cross. Yeah. yeah, there you go. There you go. That? Yeah. Yeah, or or the or the last part. Yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> we'll report back when I when I don't mess it up. No, sh show me your favorite lick. My I call I, I call that the pet lick. lick. Oh, my favorite ACDC lick. This is just what comes to mind. Ah. It's been a while. Excuse me. <laughs> Licks like it's it's it in in a weird position. Oh, I'm sure I'm playing it wrong. Yeah. But but I, I like the way you're playing it though. Oh, thanks. <laughs> the wrong way. <laughs> ah. It's been so long. efficient way. How's he do it? Yeah, it's like... It's way easier to yeah. do it that Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, no. Switch you're, position. You you're probably going off by the sound because that's twangier. I do. That's I do a lot like a little bit of twang. Yeah. 
of Mike trying to get that. <laughs> what's, what's, uh, what's your vibrato exercise? What, what did you, ah. How did you develop that? Okay. Because I just sit around. Okay. And it doesn't seem to be helping. I just do that for hours and it doesn't okay. seem to be sticking. Um, do, do, do a vibrato just on the, without the bend. Just on the note without the bend. Just oh, on the vibrato. Okay. I okay. usually I do the BB King. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That yeah. stuff. Uh, nice. I've I've uh, the way I teach my students is in, instead of pushing just one direction, you uh, think of it as you're, you're you're touching your fingertip to opposite the uh, opposite other, other side of the string. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it feels weird. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I get, oh, get yeah. that. Because if it goes to go one direction, the tendency is to go sharp. Yeah. If you go, but if you go both directions, the main note is in between. Yeah, there you go. That's, that's a little stankier. Yeah, yeah. Wow, okay. I'm going home for some things to work on. <laughs> yeah. It's it's the weirdest thing, dude. Um, I, I swear. The the way I learn is it's it's weird. I had a dream one one night. Uh, I was like 15 or 16. And I was thinking about vibrato and I had a dream. I was riding at the back of a pickup truck with Eric Clapton. <laughs> you know, and asked and I I get to ask him one one question. Was, like, was the truck full of like hay bales? Or something. Well, it's just what kind of truck? The Filipino version of that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so I asked him one question. Uh, how do you do vibrato? And he answered me in Filipino. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's shit. the weirdest thing. I know, dude. It's the weirdest thing. But he goes, yeah, when, when you do the vibrato, you got to push up and push, uh, but pull down as well. You don't just go in one did, direction. Did you ever go and look that up? Like, is that how he actually does here's, it? Here's the weirdest thing. Uh, I wake up the next day. I turn on the TV, and there's a, like an Eric Clapton concert, and he does he does the exact thing. Oh my god! It's like you you subconsciously picked up on that, and yeah. then you just told yourself. <laughs> yeah. That's wild. It's wild. No, it, it's the weirdest thing, dude. So he, uh, when he's in the upper frets, he he tends to let go of his thumb, but he does the. It's, uh, you get a visual uh, re pre reference of how far you need to go, as opposed to just shake the note and it'll be fine. That's that's so much. Man, you've got you've got all the the like the easy ways to figure things out. You've got like the, these visual reference points are blowing yeah. my mind. Yeah. Wow. Because the the old way of teaching is you you gotta you gotta read your sheet music. And nothing else. Mm -hmm. If you if you read tab, that's gonna mess you up, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but then they they don't. That makes it intimidating because sure because street Absolutely. music is like ah oh, that's that's the pinnacle. That's the best thing. That's that's you know. But the way I see it, um, you got to work it out so that every every resource that is available to you makes sense mm -hmm. to you, you know. Cause now I'm I'm at a point where I, I I look at tab and and even though it, it's it's just a single plane, in my head I can see the the rise and, and fall of the of music, and then if if I read sheet music I can figure out that note and visualize it on the let's say the fifteenth fret of the guitar, mm -hmm. or I can also play it on the nineteenth fret on the third string, you know, and 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 stuff like that. So if when when people ask me. Should I go tab or should I go sheet music? You know, do everything. Um, do everything. Yeah, do do go with whatever makes the most sense to you. Because in the end, it's it's you're you're the one making music. Exactly, it's me. 
Yeah. It's all about me. Yeah. <laughs> all me and nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. It's got to make sense. Oh, well, this that's so helpful. Thank you for... Oh, it's my, my pleasure. Do I, do I owe you anything for the... <laughs> <laughs> you just gave me a whole you, lesson. You got it. What, what do you call it? Uh, you gave me the pleasure of your company. Oh, <laughs> you old softy. I appreciate that. It's really good to hang out with you. I'm so yeah. glad that we ran across each other this awesome. week. Awesome. Yeah. Likewise, dude. Right. Yes, yeah, rules. Make, make, Okay, so I don't know how this, what this video will be about. Oh, or... we've been recording <laughs> we've been this recording whole time. This whole time, but it's all about Guitar House. Guitar House. Guitar House. Guitar House. Like, like share, subscribe. Uh, check out Pwishing's channel. <laughs> Mike. Sorry about the name. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, thanks to uh, Sweetwater. Uh, Didario. Chase Bliss. I, I always forget. It's Big Ear! <laughs> it's Grant and Karen, I'm sorry. And thanks, Ryan, <laughs> for letting us run amok in your house. Your guitar house. Your guitar house. Yeah. Do all the good stuff. See you guys soon. Bye. <laughs> oh, thanks. Ah, that was Thank you. What a delightful oh, dude. 40 minutes? How long? 50 minutes? <laughs> What Next the heck? time more. on Guitar uh, House. Oh, is it of this guitar house? Guitar. <laughs> guitar in this house. What? Can I have one more? Guitars in this house. Man, these white people crazy. <laughs> <laughs>